Einstein said, look deep into nature and then you will understand everything better. I am an artist who is inspired by the natural world. Uh, I spend time in forest areas intrigued by the processes by which trees and plants grow and decay. And in my art, I explore aspects of nature that are hidden to city dwellers. Uh, but I did not start out as an artist. I actually started in the corporate world and I made the transition to the very different life of a contemporary artist. And uh, this transition uh, was uh, made possible by, by my experiences in nature. And uh, these are the experiences that really helped me, inspired me uh, to move on. Uh, but first, I want to start by asking you, did any of you enjoy drawing and painting as children? Me too. <laughs> as a child, I loved to draw, paint, create things with my hands. And uh, in my, everybody around me knew that this was a lovely hobby to have. But nobody thought that this could be a serious career choice. And uh, I thought to myself that if I follow the cookie-cutter career path, that was advocated to all children of my generation, I would get a good job. And with this good job, I thought I would get the freedom I longed for. So I think some of you know the cookie cutter career path I'm talking about. The first step was to go to engineering college, and the next step was to go to business school. And with this two-step process, you proved yourself worthy of a good job. And so, I allowed the cookie cutter to mold me and I was rewarded by my dream corporate job in Singapore. And the job I got in Singapore was um, interesting. It was intellectually stimulating. The money was good. And not only that, I had time to practice art in my free time. I even enrolled for art classes. And a few years went by like this, but after a while, I realized that this was not enough for me. This was not the freedom that I had been looking for as a child. I realized that I was happiest when I was making art, and I wanted more time to do so. And I would walk uh, in the seaside parks of Singapore, and uh, there are some beautiful old trees there. And I was very drawn to these old trees. I realized that these trees have been around for generations before I was born. And even after I die, they would still be there listening to the st stories of generations after me. This made me very aware that all our stories and our roller coaster emotions that we take so seriously are very small in comparison to the longer time spans of nature. I realized that, uh, you know, that we, are, we take things too seriously, the intensity that we have. Um, you know, and I thought that if our life is so short, why don't we just lighten up and enjoy and do the things we love? In later years, I made an artwork based on these sentiments. So the structure you see in the center is called the tree and me. It's made of newspapers, plants, vegetables, henna, coffee, turmeric. Sorry. By dissolving newspaper into organic materials, my intention here is to reflect upon how uh, the stories of our times, which are written on these newspapers, will ultimately dissolve into the larger context of nature. At the base of this structure are forms that are made with my fist, and they represent how we try to grasp things, but ultimately everything slips through our fingers. And so uh, these experiences with the old trees made me realize that I want to spend the rest of my life doing what I really wanted, what I really loved, and that was creating art. And these experiences also made me think that um, what is most popular, what everybody else is doing, is not necessarily what is right for me. All of us are different, and we need to find our own meaning, our own source of happiness. So for me, I was now ready to move on to the life of a full-time artist. 
But while I was ready to move on, this was not going to be easy. In fact, I had grossly underestimated what it would take for me to make a place for myself in the world of art. A young seedling, just coming out of the seed, is at its most tender and most vulnerable. And at this time, it does not know of the many storms it has to weather before it grows into a tree. And um, I believe that it's perhaps best that it does not know. Because if a seedling knew about the storms it has to weather, it may be too scared to even come out of the seed. And then it would miss out on the adventures of life. So for me, oblivious of the storms that lay ahead, I just gave myself over to the joys of making art. I went back to art school, and I hope that many of you here can relate to this, but for me, it was the first time that I was studying something that I really enjoyed, that I really wanted to learn about. And it was an amazing experience. I was like a kid in a store. And uh, the world of contemporary art opened up to me, and uh, I knew that this is what I had been looking for. I was on my path. But after art school, things became more complicated. My decision to leave the corporate world had come short to my family and my friends. And uh, many of them uh, were still hoping that I would go back to the corporate career. They thought that college, two years of school and years of experience as a corporate uh, in the corporate world could not be traded for the uncertain future as an artist meanwhile in the world of art nobody understood or cared what i had given up to be there for them i was a nobody so once more it was nature that helped me through this uh, phase i was invited for an artist residency in australia and i was walking alone in the forest there and as I walked, I uh, came upon this beautiful flower. And this flower stopped me in my tracks. And I looked at it, and I stood there for a long time. And the next day, something told me that I must go back to look for that flower. But when I went back to the same spot in the jungle, the flower was not there anymore. I realized that if I had not seen that flower the previous day, it would have blossomed in its fullest glory and died, and nobody would have known about it. Nature gives of itself fully without the need to be appreciated or rewarded. And this was a very important lesson for me. Over the next several years, I made a lot of I made several sketches of plants and um, flowers I saw on, in the forest. And lovingly, painstakingly, I transferred them onto this huge whiteboard wall using whiteboard markers. So all the time that I did this, I knew that this work would be erased in the matter of minutes. And this whole thing, this whole exercise for me was about reminding myself to give myself fully to my art making without worrying about how it will be appreciated and how it will be rewarded. During another artist residency in Australia, I encountered a forest that had been devastated by bushfires. And the entire forest was raised to the ground. And all that was left was a layer of black soot on the forest floor. But soon, I saw green shoots coming out of the black ground. And very soon, the forest sprang back. Nature is strong and resilient, even in the face of the biggest challenges. And for me, this was a lesson that every time I faced a challenge, I chose to remember these lessons. Around this time, I also became aware that there were many stories I was telling myself and others about why I could not do something. And I realized that it was now time to let go of these limiting beliefs and to let possibility come up instead. The world of art is an unstructured place. There are no set ways to do things. In the corporate world, I had learned that if I wanted to achieve something, I must have a goal, and then I must have a plan to achieve that goal. But here, I had only dreams, and not many paths to achieve those dreams. 
I was invited for another artist residency, this, this time to Catalonia, Spain. And here I saw some seeds on the forest floor. These seeds were small, tiny, insignificant. And yet I thought that each of them has the capacity to become a whole tree, a huge tree. Nature has the capacity to support such a magnificent transformation. And if you think about it, any achievement, any big thing that we see around us started from something very small, maybe just a thought in somebody's head. And I thought I should think of my artistic career and my artistic practice as seeds with immense potential. And so it was with these kind of experiences that I slowly started letting go of control and started to trust what happens when you do something purely for the love of it. And amazingly, the more I trusted, the more paths opened up to me. And the opportunities that came my way, the inspiration that came my way, the dots that connected, all of this was way beyond anything I could have planned for. My role continued to be to live by the lesson of that flower in the forest. So I treated each breakthrough as a kind of divine gift that I must give my best to. And as I continued to have faith in my own instinct, my work flourished. Today, my work is connecting with people around the world, and they are reaching out to me. I'm getting opportunities to um, exhibit and create in amazing venues internationally, alongside artists who were once my role model. As I continue to spend um, more time in nature, I'm also experiencing a new kind of spirituality. As I walk alone in the forests and in the mountains, I'm, I'm very aware that my body is as organic as the earth I walk on and the plants and the trees around me. And it is only the voice in my head that, it, that is telling me that I am separate, the ego asserting itself. But when I'm in nature, I know for sure that I'm a part of this, and I know that I'm a part of other living beings. In this work, you see a tiny figure there, and it's wearing a suit of grass. And the interwoven threads are a reflection of how our lives in the city are still interwoven with the natural world. Each of us has had our own experiences with nature and must have our own memories. And I believe that if more of us could connect to this feeling of oneness with nature and with each other, this could lead to a lot of healing and a lot of joy for society. But today when we talk about nature and spirituality, these discussions are often viewed as soft. And the reason for this actually goes back centuries. Until the end of the 17th century, the goal of knowledge had been spiritual enlightenment. And nature was seen as the domain of God. But around this time, the great works of Descartes and Newton proved that mathematical laws actually govern the natural world. And humankind, in their newfound power over nature, felt that they were justified in using nature for their benefit. And so the goal of knowledge shifted from being spiritual enlightenment to harnessing nature in the benefit of humankind. Unlike the 17th century, with our contemporary lifestyle, it is even more difficult for us to connect to nature. Today, we often view nature through a screen, like maybe a car window, or a phone screen, or a camera lens. And our minds are addicted to this constant uh, stream of mental stimulation that is available to us at the click of a button. And so, um, but, but to really experience nature, we need to actually set aside our devices and we need to walk alone in nature and experience ourselves to be surrounded by it. Think of the surfaces of nature. So, Think of the bark of a tree. On this bark, you will see the, the signs of the storms it has weathered, the wind, the water erosion, the marks left by the insects and the animals that have lived there, the plants, the, fun, uh, the fungi uh, that have grown and decayed there, and its own growth marks. So these surfaces actually build up over decades, sometimes centuries, through slow processes that can neither be hurried nor delayed. 
And these processes are the natural rhythms of nature. Some of them are biological rhythms like uh, birth, growth, decay, and mortality. And there are other rhythms as well, like day and night, the seasons, the tides. Um, but back in the city, it is very difficult for us to connect to these rhythms today. Because uh, today we surround ourselves with gadgets, with vehicles, with electric lighting, with the internet. And all of this has completely disrupted our ability to connect to the slow rhythms of nature. This artwork is called Blossom, Flourish, Wither, Perish. It is made of flowers that were once part of people's lives and also their deaths. So these flowers come from wedding bouquets, funeral wreaths, from Valentine's days, from rel religious ceremonies, and other occasions in everyday life where we use flowers. Some of the flowers here are very old and very fragile, and others are fresher and beginning to wilt. But together they are a reminder that the experiences of our life are always changing. The only thing constant is change. And even with advances in so many fields, perhaps the most important things in life still remain well beyond our control. In a world which is always changing and uncontrollable, there's a lot of strength and inspiration that we can derive from nature. I believe that we need to seek a connection with nature, not because it is a resource that we need to pass on to, the, on to future generations, even though that is true, but for the more selfish purpose of taking care of ourselves and our own well-being. And I believe that if more of us were to seek this connection to nature, this can solve a lot of problems in society today. Problems like anxiety and loss of spirituality in everyday life all the way to correcting the precarious environmental balance. Thank you.